guys, how are you this morning? I believe that you are well and you have been kept well. Um, I know that most of you have closed schools already and uh, some of you are still in school. Um, and thank you very much this morning for joining us. We are so, so excited and delighted to be here with you as we go through the Word of God. I also want to thank um, the music team for leading us so well uh, in time of worship and prayer. May the Lord bless you. And if you are there and you're joining us for the very first time, we want to say karibu sana, and that's what we say in Kenya, uh, which means you are highly welcome. And guys, my name is Teacher Rodwicks, and I'm not alone. I came here with my friends, and I would like them to introduce themselves. Good morning. My name is Reinhard Singo from Sitam Clay City, and I'm excited to be here today. As, we, as I look forward to a great time together as we learn the word of God. My name is Liz Nema, and I come from Sitam Clay City as well. And I thank God for this opportunity to share the word of God with you. I believe that you're ready with your Bible, notebook, and pen ready for the lesson. If you don't have, please run, grab them as you'll need them as we go to the lesson. Yeah, you will need them, right? Yes. That is true, guys. You will need your pen, your book, and your Bible as we look at this lesson. Now, I just want to say that we have been looking at um, a series in His presence. In other words, in God's presence. And we have looked at different kind of things that we need as um, we journey uh, in our Christian work. We have looked at a number of things that we need in this journey. And um, before we go on or before we move on with our lesson, today we are going to do uh, uh, things differently. We are not going to review last week's lesson, but we want to remind ourselves all the memory verses that we have had in this series from when we started to now. Are you ready for them? I believe that you can remember some. Okay, Reinhard. Yes. Do you remember any? Yes, teacher. Rodrix, I remember four. But before I tell you, guys at home, which one do you remember? Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. So whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Galatians 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. How about you, Liz? Do you remember any? Yes, I remember three. And the first one is Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. And Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Teacher Rodrix, yes. any memory verse that you have not mentioned? Uh, I think you have mentioned all that we have gone through apart from today's memory verse, which will be coming later on, right? Yes. Now, um... And congratulations, guys, you've done well. Now, uh, guys, I just want to say that um, the most clearly defined uh, way of how our life is uh, or where we are headed as the children of God or as a humanity is in the Word of God. And I want to say that from the Bible we learn that God created um, uh, a human being or a mankind with eternal soul. What does that mean? It means that your soul continues to exist after your physical life ends. And therefore, it can only exist in one of the two places. It can either exist at the place of destruction, which we call hell, or it can exist in a place of bliss, which we call heaven. And therefore, in our today's lesson, we'll be looking at our destination. Where are we headed? As the children of God, where are we headed? In other words, we are looking at our harbor in this journey. 
our harbor in this journey. And um, I would like us to look at a few things. But before that, I want you to look at uh, um, the, 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 the photo that is appearing on your screen. What do you see? Can you share with somebody seated next to you? But at the same time, Liz, could you share with us uh, what you're seeing on the screen? I see a harbor with lots of boats and ships that I think are about to leave or have just arrived from elsewhere. That's very true, Liz. And guys at home, do you know what a harbor is? We can simply say that a harbor is a place of security and comfort. We can also say that a harbor is a part of a body of water protected and deep enough to furnish an anchorage. Yes, that is very true, Reinhard. Yeah, as Reinhard has stated, and even as uh, Lisa has said, we have seen a harbor, and Reinhard has, has explained what a harbor is. And in short, you can see that a harbor actually provides anchorage. But not, not only that, it also allows the transfer of cargo um, with the ships as well as the passengers. So it allows the transfer of passengers and cargo between the ships or the shore. And I want to ask you, imagine that there was no harbor. Do you think we could be having the transport in, in water? Actually not. And this is to bring us to a point that every journey, every journey in this world has got a beginning and the end. There's a point where the journey starts and a point where the journey comes to an end. And this is not different from our Christian work. As Christians, one day you received Christ and you started your journey. And your, your journey is not a journey that has no end. As we say it, every journey has an end. So your journey as well, and my journey as a Christian has an end. There's a place we started, and there's a place that we are going. And therefore, in this lesson today, we will be looking at where is our destination? Where are we going as the children of God? Reinhard, what do you have to say? Teacher Rodriguez, I believe that as Christians, we all headed to heaven because that's where Jesus went after this, his life in this world. You're right, Reinhard. I also believe that if you have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior in your life, then your harbor is heaven. Wow. Our harbor is in heaven, right? Yes. Great. And therefore, guys, we will be looking at this heaven we are talking about, we'll be looking at a number of things about this destination that we are talking about, our harbor that we are talking about. And we are going to base this on what John uh, um, uh, teaches us or what John saw or what was revealed to John in the book of Revelation. We are going to look at how does this heaven actually look like. Reinhard, what do you have to say? John sees heaven. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 to 8. From what the scripture says, John sees another vision. And in this vision, Jesus said to John, Come up here. Immediately, John was standing before Jesus, who was sitting in a throne in heaven. John saw some very wonderful things that we can look forward to. To help us understand more about this, let's think about four important questions. What will heaven look like? Revelation chapter 21, verse 9 to 23. John saw a very beautiful city. John says, heaven is so bright and shiny that it looks like a very expensive jewel, like you might see in a beautiful ring or necklace. The city is in the shape of a square. It has very high walls and 12 gates. Each gate is made of a precious stone, and the foundation of the wall is decorated with any kind of precious stone there is. The city has a very large street made out of pure gold. The gold is so shiny that it looks like glass you can see through. In heaven, there's no need of the sun or moon, for instead, the glory of God is the light in heaven. Who will be in heaven? We'll find this in Revelation 5, verse 11, Revelation 7, verse 9 to 11. Heaven is God's home. So we know he will be there. In the vision, John saw Jesus and many thousands of angels. John also saw a very large 
crowd of people from every country, nation, tribe, and language singing praises to God. There were so many of them that they could not be counted. All these people were dressed in white robes to show that Jesus had cleansed them and had given them new life because they had believed in him for the righteousness of their sins. They held palm branches in their hands and were singing praises to God, thanking him for saving them from being punished for their sins. It will be exciting to praise God with people from all over the world. Wow. It will be that exciting, right? Yes. That we praise our God, or we praise Jesus with everyone else from the world, right? Yeah. Wow. And this brings us to the third question. The third question is, what will happen in heaven? What will happen in heaven? And you can find this. I believe that you're writing these scriptures down. Uh, because you can uh, go and read it for yourself and understand what the scripture says. Now, Revelation chapter 2, verse 17 um, is one of the scriptures. The second one you can also write is Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. We also write down Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 to 14. And also you put down Revelation chapter 19, and verse 16. All those scriptures help us to understand what will happen in heaven. Even though the Bible does not clearly tell us everything that will be happening in heaven, but there are three main things that I would like us to look at. The first thing that we find is that Jesus will be seated or will be sitting on God's throne. Jesus will be sitting on God's throne. And he will be ruling, you know? He will be reigning forever. He will be called a king. Yeah? So Jesus will be seated on the throne of God. He will be called the king of kings. He will be called the lord of lords. Okay? And the second thing that I want us to look at is that... Um, Everyone, and I mean everyone, everyone that will be in heaven will be singing praises to the Lamb of God. Everyone that will be in heaven will be singing praises to the Lamb of God. The question is, who is the Lamb of God? Oh, yeah, you are right. The Lamb of God is Jesus Christ. And the question, another question is, why is he called the Lamb of God? You're right again. He's called the Lamb of God because he is the one who washed away the sins of the world. As we see in uh, John chapter 1, verse 29, that he is the one who washed away the sins of the world. And therefore, people will be singing praises to him. And the third thing that we see is that everyone that is in heaven will be given a new name. And do you know what is surprising about this, guys? That name will only be known to that person and God. You know what that means? Imagine your mom will be given a new name, your dad will be given a new name, you will be given a new name, and that name is not the name that your parents call you. How wonderful do you think that is? So exciting, right? Oh, yes. But now the fourth question that we ask ourselves is, we have seen everything that will be in heaven. We have seen how the heaven will look like. We have seen who will be in heaven. But now the fourth question is, what do you think will not be in heaven? What will not be in heaven? Okay, we can find this in Revelation chapter 20, verse 21. I mean, uh, sorry, chapter 20, verse 10. And also you can read it in chapter 21, verse 4 and verse 27. Now, a number of things that we find here, but the first thing that we find that will not be in heaven is sin. Sin will not be in heaven. The Bible tells us that God is holy. God being holy 
he cannot be at the same place or he cannot live together with the sin. So sin will not be in heaven. And what is sin? Oh yeah, you're right. Sin is anything you think, say, or do that is contrary or that goes against the word of God. And therefore sin will not be in heaven. But not only just sin, we also see that imagine uh, living a life that is free from lying, free from uh, cheating, free from getting angry, free from all these kind of things. That is the kind of life that we live. But not only just that, there will be no sorrow. There will be no pain. There will be no demon or Satan in heaven. All these things will not be there. Don't you wait to be in heaven? Great, Liz, what do you get from this lesson? What are you learning? Wow, I don't know what you guys at home are getting from this lesson. On my end, I have learned a lot of things. However, I can mention two. Number one is that God created mankind with eternal soul. And number two, as a child of God, we are on a journey and our destination is in heaven. In other words, our harbor is heaven. Very correct, Liz. I have also learned about how heaven will look like. I have learned that God, Jesus, angels, and people from all nations, countries, languages, and tongues will be in heaven. I have also learned that people will be given new names. They will be singing and Jesus will be sit sitting on the throne. There will be no pain, no death, sin, or even Satan and his demons. Wow. So all those things will not be there, right? Yeah. Great things. What about you guys? What have you learned? Could you share with somebody seated next to you at home and tell them what you have learned from this lesson? I want to say this, guys. That Jesus' desire is that one day you and I will be with him in heaven. That is his desire. That one day you will be in heaven with him. And there is only one way that the Bible gives us, so the, the Bible tells us of, and that is accepting Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior. I want to say this, that that is a decision that cannot be made by anyone else but you. It is a decision that you alone must make. Not your mom to make a decision, that decision for you. Not your dad, not your aunt, no one else can make this decision. But you are to make the decision to accept Jesus into your life. And I want to say that preparing or being ready for heaven is very important. Because you don't know and I don't know the day I will die or you will die or the day that Jesus is coming back for his church or his children, none of us knows. And for this reason, we must be ready always. That's what Jesus tells us, that we must prepare always. You should not wait until you are old. Because we don't know when we will die or when Jesus will come. You may be there until, um, you may live in this world until you grow old and your body wears out. Or he might be coming tomorrow. Or he may be. It might be this afternoon. You never know. And therefore, I want to bring to us that it is important that we make this decision to follow Jesus Christ. If you are there and you have never given your life to Christ, this is the moment. If you had given your life to Christ and maybe you backslid, you started doing things that do not please God, it is also your time. Therefore, can you pray this prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I confess my sin and I, I need you into my life. Thank you for dying on cross for me and thank you for giving me life. Today, I receive you and accept you into my life as Lord and Savior. Thank you once again for dying for me and giving me life. In Jesus' name, 
I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. If you have made that prayer, friends, you have taken a step like no any other. You have taken a bold step of accepting Jesus into your life. And I want to say that you have now been born into a new family, and that is the family of God. You are now a born-again Christian, meaning that if Jesus came this evening, you will be going to heaven with him. And in this family, there are three things that I want to share with you that we must do. One is sharing with others what Jesus has done for you. Go and share with people. Tell them that now I'm a born-again Christian. Now I belong to Jesus. And invite them to do the same. You can tell them about what we have shared today because it is important for them also to prepare for their, for their lives. Number two, it's important for you to read the word of God. Reading the word of God will help you to be able to understand and know what God is saying about your life and what he wants you to do in this journey. The last thing that I want to share with you is that you also need to pray. The way you talk to your dad and mom and uh, your relatives, God is also interested in talking to you and you talking to him. And we do this through prayer. So it is important that you pray. It is important that you talk to God. And now, before we bring our lesson to an end, I want to invite Reinhard to pray for us and help us understand, I mean, to pray for us and as we, we come near the end of this lesson. Yes. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord Father, thank you, Lord, for what you have done, Lord, for us, O oh God. May you put the word of God in these people, O oh King of Kings. May you help them, O oh King of Kings, O oh Lord, because you are an amazing God, O oh King of Kings. May you put in them the Holy Spirit to help them. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Guys, it's already time for the memory verse. And the memory verse for today comes from John chapter 14, verse 2, which says, In my father's house are many rooms. If we are not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. Wow. Wow. I believe that you have written it down and you will be able to remember. Please make sure that you do that because it is so wonderful. Now we have given you the very last memory verse for this series. Right? Yes. Now, I just want to say thank you so, so, so much for taking your time and joining us uh, today or this morning. For those of you who joined us on, uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on um, Hope TV, on Hope Radio, whichever means you are able to join us, we say God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the other thing that I want to say is that I believe that you'll be joining us as we begin the new series come next Sunday because we are starting a new series. And remember that your harbor is in heaven. Your harbor is in heaven. And therefore, from our end, we just want to say bye. bye.